What's up, you guys? You have reached another episode of 15 Minutes at the Red Dot, or part of the Red Dot series. Today, we have an amazing person up in the building who could teach us a lot of things. Uh, to. Isma, how you doing? What's up? What's up? I'm Mo. Yes. I am the founding partner of the law office of Marisha Mo Bay Taylor. Come on now. We specialize in entertainment and intellectual property law. Mm. I say I work with one of some of the world's most creative and innovative creators. So I'm excited to talk. This is my passion. Well, thank you so much for being here, first off. We have so much to dissect and to know about what what in the world you got going on in your world and how it all works out and plans out. Listen. Today is such a beautiful day. It really is. It really is. It's warm, but it's nice. Like no, it's yeah, nice. that's it's what I so thought. Chill. I was like, I was over there sweating earlier. Right. I was like, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get ready. I'm like, uh-uh, it's too much for me, y'all. I got, we got to bring it back. We got to bring it back. So, uh, can you tell me a little bit about what inspires you? With so, your with your work line. Yes. Yeah. So my practice is honestly deeply rooted in activism. Mm. And it's come from a place, you know, I've been in the legal industry now for 14 years. 14 years? In every capacity you can think of. You know, I started my what? last year in you college. You look good. I'm just, wait, wait, <laughs> let's bring, she said 14 years, 14 years where? What are you talking about, honey? Aren't you like 25? <laughs> I wish. I wish. I drink a lot of water. That's the key. I'm 34, but I drink a lot let, of water. Let me know. If you want to know the secret. Can I have some water? Yes. Water. You gotta drink a lot of water and I do a little rose water spritz. Like, it's a vibe. That's oh, a she bougie with it. Even she tight right rose okay, water. Like you got to. Uh, but, you know, I started in this industry 14 years ago. Right. My last year of college, I was like an intern at this law firm out in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, and over that span of time, you know, I've worked in a number of capacities in all kinds of different arenas of the legal landscape, from like your private law firms to government, quasi-government, mm. you know, smaller firms, medium-sized firms, in-house, you know, I've seen a lot. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when I was starting my own practice, it was coming from a place of of activism and it was like what how can I bring this skill set to my community to what right. I really care about yeah. black creativity mm-hmm. and the preservation protecting black creativity right so that's where it really all comes from um, so that's what you would say that uh, what was an inspiration behind all of this. Yeah, and yeah. I just, you know, I come from a very creative family. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad, he was a thespian. He was in the theater for over 40 years. He wow. studied uh, performing arts at Howard, class of 1970. Worked up to the Howard Bison. Hey. So he always worked up to the Howard Bison. Wait, hey, oh, baby. Day every day. Baby. <laughs> uh, HBCUs all the way. <laughs> no, but he Let him know. Us, okay? But he, him being a creator himself, he kept us in creative spaces from a very, very young age. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's just all I've ever known. Even when I was even working at just very conservative law firms, like any of my free time was spent in creative spaces. Like that's what I was always just drawn to. Right. So I knew I wanted to merge this like, you know, many years of legal experience I have and bring it into this creative world where I could be useful in that mm-hmm. space. That's freaking hope <laughs> the fact that we have somebody who not only just respects and love our black culture artistic world but we have somebody that could protect us in the black artistic uh, world like come on now 
And we've gone so many years, so many decades, With. millennium, unprotected, right? This is how our work, our creations become exploited and appropriated. Mm -hmm. And I was tired of that, quite frankly. Yeah. It's like enough is enough, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, honestly, with me myself, like it's it's I'm on a path of uh, trying to find what my purpose is in this life, right? And um, going with with what you were saying, like you have found that voice of what you personally, what you think that doesn't click with you, and now you're doing something that would definitely fix this problem in in your perspective and you're you're actually you're doing something in your career that could could you know make this place a better place as far as you know the community of the black people and that's that is entirely admirable and it's beautiful thank you so much of course. Like, honestly like i've never felt so fulfilled mm -hmm. in my purpose in my career like you know, I was in really just white male spaces. I guess really? the firms I worked at, it was horrible. It's like, what am I doing? Yeah, right. You get right. to this place where it's like, what am I doing? How can I better just serve myself and my community? And so wait, how long? How long did it take for you to feel that that point in life to where? You okay? You know, you you have to do what you gotta do to yeah. make your connections. You rub your elbows to get what you to get where you are. But how long did that take for you to be like? I'm. I have. I have had enough. At least a decade. Really? Honestly, because wow. like, you know, you you know, the legal industry is its own monster in itself, and mm -hmm. how success is measured. Mm -hmm. um, what makes you a successful attorney, right? Mm -hmm. That's its own, like, it's its own subculture. What is that? I don't know. I, 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 would be, I honestly just refute all of that. And I say, for me, it's like finding your purpose, making yourself useful to your community. Like, that's why. I, yeah. Because I've never felt so um, empowered, just maybe. Yeah. And empowered, yeah. you know? Yeah. And the money comes, and the money comes, it comes hand in hand. Like, yeah. You know, like, you don't have to be broke and being your purpose. Like, mm -hmm. if you can provide something of value to people that they feel, you know, mm -hmm. that it's a mutual relationship. They're right. taking care of you and you're taking care of them and everybody right. wins. And I, I really feel like I'm at least beginning to tap into that. And it's right. very, very, very rewarding. Mm. Because it's twofold. It's like, yes, I can pay my bills, but also take care of my community. Exactly. And make sure I'm protecting it and make sure they're paying, they able to pay their bills too. Right. And preserve their legacies and their creativity. So would you say that is a huge um, reason why you became a lawyer in the first place? I guess so. You know, I was so mm -hmm. young mm -hmm. when I made this decision. Wait, how old are you? I mean, I went straight out of college. Oh, school. really? So, so I you're was about 21. like 20. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, it's hard, right? Because we're forced to make some of these decisions when we're so young or we, or we perceive we're forced to make some of those decisions. Right, like, exactly. I mean, either way, I did. I, 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 and it's like, I, I often question that self. Like, I, I think time has been able to explain that. Like, mm -hmm. it's made it make sense. Mm -hmm. I was very, very young, didn't really know what I was doing, but as I've aged, I've come more and more into my purpose. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I see why I did that. I didn't know then. I didn't know I was 21 that I wanted to be an attorney for black creatives. Yeah, right. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I know I like black creativity mm -hmm. from, a, from a very young age. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just, I think, you know, even when we're talking about like your t-shirt, like someone like DMX, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're seeing our Wait, we black gotta represent role, real quick. Our black creativity kind of age and kind of seeing what it looks like into the future. Hip hop is a relatively new medium. That is true indeed. And now we're seeing legends come from that medium that's really In such around. a short period of time too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's helpful like to kind of like to see those kind of instances then we're better able to pre like predict what the issues could be mm -hmm. for someone that is maybe up and coming right now mm -hmm. in 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We might we might be like, you know, we might have the pleasure to cross paths with the next DMX or someone of that stature, but we're seeing them younger in their career. Right. Now we've kind of been able to see an example of what it's like to see 
a medium like hip hop age? Mm. And what are the legal issues mm -hmm. that accompany mm -hmm. that aging of that medium? Right. And a lot of it, I mean, that's why I've chosen intellectual property. I didn't, I didn't take any intellectual property courses when I was in law school. Like, I kind of had a general legal education. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, I was interested in many different things, but I didn't know this would be it. It wasn't until I was deep into the creative spaces mm -hmm. and seeing where the need was, I was like, oh, they need intellectual property. Right, right, right. I mean, it takes somebody to look, to take a step back and look at the, the whole entire picture because everybody's so closed in, inside of the box. And it takes somebody like you, smart, beautiful, <laughs> intelligent. Thank you so much. To, yeah, of course, to really like sit here and dissect our problems. And honestly, I, I appreciate you for the person and the woman that you are in, in our world because without you, what are we gonna do? We need somebody to protect us. We need to protect our culture. And that's you. And that's my next, I think, like big step and big and big project is mm -hmm. bringing in other, you know, black legal minds. Because that's mm -hmm. the thing, we get caught up in making money, and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, how do we make money and equate our success? And a lot of times, it's like going to work for this predominantly white corporate exactly. law firm. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm, yep. I'm trying to, I think what my next big goal is is to bring in other just black legal minds to assist in this mission right. of protecting us and, and, and showing that you can be successful. Right. You can take care of yourself. You can build wealth around protecting us. Mm -hmm. So that's that's definitely a big mission of mine because we need the help. I see the demand. Yeah. I never imagined the demand would be so great. Like I literally threw a link, you know, scheduling link into my Instagram bio, like, okay, like I see there's a demand, like, let me just throw this out into the universe. Right. In the quarantine, like I got the time, let's do it. Right, yeah. And it's just the demand and the response has been overwhelming, and it's like we need more of this. And I wish more black legal minds, black attorneys knew this, right? And didn't uh, necessarily uh, associate working for us with somehow being uh, a detriment to building your success because it's not. So would you say that's probably like what would you would consider one one of the worst things about being a black lawyer? One of the worst things about being yeah. a black lawyer. Yeah, like what? What is the worst thing about being a black, thing? a black female lawyer? What is the worst thing? I would say, because this is not a space. It's a difficult space to navigate mm. because it's not a space we always existed in. Mm -hmm. Even right. now, I think last uh, statistic I saw, like five percent of attorneys in America are black. So it's a very five five percent five. There's a so, hundred right that we have to. Um, so the language, right? Like this is right. a whole subculture. It has its own language, mm -hmm. its own you know kind of currency associated with it. It's its own. You know, I don't come from a lot of attorneys. Like I'm a first generation mm. attorney. Mm. So it's like being able to navigate that space. Like you spend so much time just trying to kind of unbox the language mm -hmm. and figure out how you fit in and, and how you could be useful and, and I, even imposter syndrome mm -hmm. where you're like am I good enough for this right because there's so much elitism and it's just so foreign to I think a lot of our community um but I think that's been the hardest part is kind of unboxing this I'm telling you I've been in this game 14 years mm -hmm. it's taken time to unbox this and build confidence to be able to go out on my own and try to protect my people see well with that said what would you tell your younger self? Like, what advice would you give your younger self 14 years ago? Well, what would you tell? What would you tell Mo? Just keep going. Mm. And I have to In what myself, ways, though? Like, people say that all the time. They're so vague about stuff. Like, can you? Yeah, OK, I keep going. But what do I do to keep going? Like, how do I become a successful lawyer like yourself? Tell me. I mean, and I say keep going, and I have to even tell that to my current day self. Like, mm. I'm still in this evolution, in this process. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to keep going because, again, this is not a space, like, our people have always been in, or at least, like, um, received in. Like, mm -hmm. there may have been black attorneys, like, in 1900, but that's right. because we were invited in that space or yeah. embraced in that space. Right. So, 
it's like whatever experience, and, and, and I'm telling you, I've worked in a lot of different sectors, but they all help with what I'm doing to this day. Mm. So it's like, that's why I say when I say keep going, it's like gaining that experience anywhere you can and knowing that it will make sense in the future. Like mm -hmm. we are kind of our, the pilots of our own destiny, our own journey. Mm -hmm. So we are able to mold that journey. So it's like, I would say just keep going. I know that's very, very big. Just keep, you know, yeah, myself, it is. You, you're, you're sounding very Hollywood right now. I know. Even <laughs> as I sit here today, I'm like, keep going. Like, I'm on everybody to does that. Everybody does that. Like, all right, I'm a model. How do I become better? Oh, yeah, you just do this and you keep going. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? What do I need to do to get to keep the next going. tier? What just are you know, talking have about? Have that confidence. Know that you're on to something. Okay. It will make sense okay. one day. It may not be today or tomorrow, but it will make sense one day. Okay, I'm fine sure. then. Fine. I'll, I'll accept that for now. I'll do my <laughs> research. What would you say is your ultimate career goal? You know, I was just talking with someone there in the back and mm -hmm. talking about a photographer I know that, you know, was able to protect his works. He's taking photos of the most iconic, mm -hmm. you know, black musicians the world has ever seen, period. Nice. Like, he yeah. told me, and I've had the pleasure to be able to just have conversations with him mm -hmm. and what he's up to. Mm -hmm. And he's been able to feed himself and protect his legacy based upon... You know the copyright registrations he did back in 1970, 1980. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. And now being able to sue who's ever infringing upon his <laughs> creations. So I that's how I want to see when I when I look back at myself. I'm 34 now. When I look back at myself, and I'm 70, 80. You want to be I'm, able to sue people. <laughs> yeah, I always want to be able to sue people. Like, don't even know. Me, me is going down. Right, you ain't gonna take my credit. Okay, that's, that's where we go. That's where, that's how, that's where we're building up to. You know who I is? Because everybody needs to eat into the future, and that's how we do it. Okay, don't get me wrong. Okay, but I want to look back, you know, because a lot of what I do, you know, I'm working with people that are kind of up and coming right now. Okay. Um, and I, I, I say that because I, I feel like I do have like a very forward-thinking, futuristic mind. And when I see something dope, I'm able to, you know, it took years. It took years to kind of build that confidence to see something dope and say, that's going to be dope for a very long time. Mm. That's going to be very, very valuable to the future. Let me talk with this person. Let me build right. a relationship here. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, and, and a lot of my clients, we're coming up together. Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to look back when I'm, you know, hopefully 70, 80, whatever, and... For them to say that work we did in 2020, 2021, they're not quarantined, they're not pandemic. Baby, we're eating. You know, we're we're sending our kids to college off of this. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like so that's it's, it's preserving the legacies of tomorrow. Mm. That's why I would say my greatest career goal is. Yeah, that's like I, I mean, dude, I'm I'm gonna have to keep you here. I know. <laughs> Security on the vibes. I'm gonna have to keep you real, real Tap close. I already know I'm gonna need you at some point in life. Yeah, just goes, saying. It's so, it's so much bigger. It's so, yeah, you know, I, yeah. Than me or my client, like it's, it's really a movement. I'm really trying to build a movement. Yeah. She, she gonna have to get me out of trouble soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh God, I'm so, but we gonna, you know, no trouble. Out. Never. Not me. You know. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. What would you say has been the peak of your career? I mean, every day. Every day. Honestly. Every day is your most proudest point of your career ever. Honestly, like, because I'm just working with so many people that mm -hmm. I think are going to be just dynamic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the future. Like, I'm always just so privileged and honored when someone just taps in with me. Right. Like, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Let's. I want to do my trademark. Like, I got this brand. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing my fashion thing. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I've already seen You're, the brands. I yeah. think they're dope brands. So yeah. I'm like, absolutely. We need mm -hmm. to protect this. Come on now. So whenever someone makes that conscious decision to tap in with me and give me their hard-earned money from whatever you know thing they've created, I'm always so deeply honored. Like that is really some of my you know greatest career accomplishments. Is, yeah. Is anytime I get that alert on my calendar, like oh oh, and I'm always like I'm, I'm a fan. Right. That's kind of where it, a lot of this has started is from being a fan mm. of the creativity, whether mm. it's 
you know, a fashion brand or visual artist, a musician, I'm always a fan of the things I get to work on. So mm -hmm. when, when that becomes reciprocal and they tap in with me, that is a tremendous accomplishment. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. So are you working on anything right now, like as far as creativity? Yes. Okay. I guess I'm going to give a blast out. Come like, on. Actually, uh, Black Queer Terra. Oh, a lot of uh, just people in the spiritual world have tapped into my legal service. They're popping right now. Like oh. they say, in times of uncertainty, uh, witches and spiritualists do very, very well because it's an uncertain time. People mm -hmm. want to have some kind of uh, reconciliation, some kind of uh, comfort in the time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they tap into this kind of alternative universe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm tapping in with Black Queer Tarot tomorrow. Mm. I'm super excited. He's Kendrick out at NYC. Nice. Very dope uh, graphic artist and designer. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited. Uh, but just a okay. I'm working with a lot of different uh, fashion designers. Uh, Lamert Park LLC. He did a oh. uh, yeah. He did a collaboration with Forever Twenty One for Black History Month. Nice. Stuzo Clothing. Shout out to Stuzo Clothing. It's just exciting, man. It's just a lot of things that are probably across my desk. And I'm I'm excited because I do believe we live deeply in the future. At you over here moving. Yes. Okay. There's there's no there's no stopping with you. I like that. That yeah. that's why I said I need to keep, I need to keep you in my corner. It's exciting, man. As you, you can see how excited I get. Like Come on. I mean, it's, it almost you're, As soon as work. you came into the building, I was like, "Damn, her vibes are amazing." Oh, so like I, I felt it from like a mile away. I feel like I'm like, "Can can we just like hurry up and get to you?" Yeah, come on. It's exciting, man. Like I'm just so excited. Like it's it's my privilege, it's my honor to be able to do the, It doesn't feel like work. Like yeah, no, literally, I'm chilling. I'm right. chilling. We're like having a good conversation. I'm just trying to get to know yeah. who you are. Like, it's 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 just for a greater purpose. Yeah. It's like, you never know. Y'all might need her in your life. Y'all. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can Tap we? In. Wait, wait. Shout, shout out the Instagram real quick. Okay. Just just in case. Yes. You need my girl. I'm the T H E M B T. Mm. T-H-E-M-B-T. Period. 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 Just, in. just in case you wanted to know who I was, you know. <laughs> We're here for whatever you need. Like, you know, for me. We, we're out here shouting now, so it's, it's about that time, you know. It's uh, uh, K-A-A-A. -A -A -A. Okay. Wait, wait, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Too, too many A's. Too many A's. How K many A's are there? Two. Okay. K-A-A-Y-A-S-H-A-Y. Check your girl out. But you know, you know. We, we, and they got this Red Dot series, right? That the Red Dot series. The Red oh Dot my gosh! Series, oh my baby. gosh! We we don't forget to follow the Red Dot series. Come on now, oh, fifteen minutes at the Red Dot. We have nothing but amazing people in here all the time. You. I'm honored. <laughs> Period. I, when I found out about the gallery space, I, I went down a rabbit hole. I was just like, what? There's a dude. Oh, the gallery space. And now, like all the art that's lead. up, I'm just like, Jenny when I when Lee, I like exactly, we got bum, we got Johnny Lee up in the building. I like, was hype. Come on. So like, this is so vitally. Come that's the on. Thing. Like, we got we got noodles. Okay. Come on. Hey, hey. you know it's not eleven here. <laughs> And everybody wants what we have, right? We are in demand. We're always going to be in demand because we made everything. Listen, I am so dead right now. I can't. I can't. <laughs> no, like, you have no idea why I'm laughing right now. <laughs> So let me, no, let me, let me get my wits about myself. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> you really have me cracking up over there. Okay. Okay. My love. What? What do you what what do you like to do for fun? Oh man, I, I mean that's anything. what's really been the pivot ah. into my creative career, right? Uh, uh -huh. It's like I've always, even when I'm telling you, even when I was working in the most stuffy offices that ever existed, my free time was spent in creative spaces, whether it was a concert, a gallery, you know, a showroom. That's what I like to do. It's any just any like hidden talents? That we need I to know. I, I don't know. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, like, 
have unprotected talent. I don't know. Okay. I don't know about that. Maybe there's something in there, but I don't know. Okay. Because like, it would be kind of like weird if I'm so trying to take spaces. I don't, I don't have. But that's why I contribute my legal mind. Like, Fine. I don't know if I have anything creatively to we'll do. We'll give you the pass I'm creative today. On the, on the document, okay, I'm creative on the contract, baby. <laughs> That's when we get creative, okay? Okay, fine. So line. let me let me bring you into our rapid fire questions real quick. Okay. Okay. Name me three uh, artist albums that you like. Go. Three what? Artist albums that you like. What about, oh man, okay, right now I'm listening to Jack James out of the UK. He's got a new EP mm. called Joyride. Okay. Okay. And it's like this, what did he say? I think he calls it like um, nostalgic futuristic nostalgia because he's tapping into this like super vibing 90s era okay. R&B uh -huh. and I swear he might, I think there's like five six tracks in this EP but it is red okay uh, the second is, one okay second one um who else am I listening to Alex Isley has got me through the pandemic period Alex her Shut voice up. is so therapeutic mm. and I love what she's doing for the legacy of the Isley family you know? nice Iconic yeah. family. Mm -hmm. I love her sound. And your third? My third. Who are we gonna rock with? Who are we gonna rock? Oh, um, um, Kay Roosevelt. Kay Roosevelt. I'm Kay Roosevelt. He's got a he's got an EP he released in uh, 2020 called Blue. Mm. And I guess his dad is this like very notable Grammy winning like um, folklore guitar player. Oh wow. And he kind of taps into that, but his sound is like kind of like an updated version of that. Very mm -hmm. very talented. Mm -hmm. So. Jack James, Alex Isley, Kate Elizabeth. I'm rocking. I'm on a very R and B vibe because it's, it's crazy time. You gotta have some. That's things. yeah. I, I'm I'm oh. seeing. I'm like hmm. I very I. I personally don't know, but I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my you research like after sounds. this. Like those sounds. Okay, I'm okay, okay, like, okay. I'm not leading you down the wrong path. Like, so, me. so then with that said, let me. Okay, Kendrick Lamar okay. or J Cole. Whoa. Yeah. I know you don't do me like that. I'm, 34 I'm doing years old, you like right? that. So like, wait, you said J Cole? I'm 34 years old. No, oh. I didn't say anybody. Like, okay. I'm just saying like we had to put that into context. Like those guys kind of were coming up as I'm coming up. Like, you know, that was the freshman class of like 2010, 2011, double XL. But if you had to pick one, who would it be? Hey. Oh my God. Right now. Uh, you, you can't ask me that. Yeah, we can't. I can't answer my Four. question. Three. I'm not gonna answer the question. I, I plead the fifth, okay? The lawyer One. pleads the fifth. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. No, you don't. You do not I bring that lawyer-ish over here today. We ain't doing questions. that. I'm sorry. Fifth we ain't doing that. Fifth Amendment. You know you picking. You picking. I'm not picking. I'm this is fifth. rapid fire. You pick. Yeah, pick the, you I pick on the fire. I, I, you pick I on the rapid. Fifth, baby. Oh, she did not choose. Damn. I refuse. I refuse. Wow. I thought I was really going to be able to. She's a lawyer, so of course I'm not going to win. Sorry. She's experienced. I'm pleading the fifth. Cause you can't ask me those. Super. No. So how am I supposed to do the rapid fire if you can, if you're not gonna okay, pick? Okay, what is rapid, okay, I'll play. J. So like, Cole. What is fire? Listen, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. Well, well, can you explain to me what the rapid fire is? Like, I better. Okay. See if it's worth it. Like, Out of the two, who would you rather prefer, J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar, artistically? But what's the rapid fire? Still have that. <laughs> I, I really said I, I really because they both inspired me in, in such like similar okay. but different ways. Like it's okay, so fine, fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. We're gonna move on. I'm so sorry, but I didn't no, know. don't be sorry. sorry. We Gucci, okay. Nikki, or Lauren. Wait, who? Nikki Minaj. Or Lauren Hill. Or Lauren Hill. Okay. I already know. Lauren Hill. I already know. <laughs> I already know. That's not even <laughs> like. It's no like, offense to Nicki Minaj, I no, love you, no, Nicki, Nicki, but Nicki Minaj. not at all. But no, because Nicki Minaj is Lauren, Lauren yeah. has so much history. Like, I'm Let sorry. Let me tell you about Lauren. I'm sorry. I remember being literally what ten years old, walking down the street with my mom, mm -hmm. sharing a CD player. She had Lauren Hill, Miss Education, of, you know, Miss Education, Lauren Hill in the CD player. I had one earphone. She had one earphone. We're walking down the street. Just singing and learning the lyrics together, so that just that just gets different. Like, mm. It's hard mm. for me. Mm. It just okay, okay, fine then, fine then, fine then. <laughs> if you had to go forward five years or backwards five years, what would you choose? I'm 
I'm gonna move forward. Like I'm forward you thinking. You go forward. I, you ain't gonna change what happened in the past. No, I'm changing what I, happened in the past. I'm. I'm. It all serves a purpose. Mm, I think mm. as you get deeper into the future, you okay, see okay. the purpose of the past is, is served, and I'm not. I'm not mad about it. Even if it's hard. Even if you were really in the trenches and it was super hard. She's making me think with my, my with my grown up thoughts over grown here. Thoughts. Damn, I'm over here feeling like I aged she two years. Move <laughs> keep it moving. We also, got to. Because fame is so valuable. That's all we have, right? Okay. And it's a blessing to have that. So okay. we gotta just cherish that moment and, and enjoy that privilege to even move forward. Because a lot of us, a lot of people have not. You know, we've okay. lost a lot of great, especially in these crazy times. We've lost a lot of great people. All right. So okay, last one. Last one. I promise. Who is, in your in your perspective, more creative, Kanye or Pharrell? I'm always a rock with Kanye. Like I'm Kanye, I'm yay high. Wow! Yay high. Wow! wow. <laughs> I'm yay. But wait, how I'm do you feel? Wait, how do you feel about him now? Like you still feel? I love Kanye. I'm excited. I'm, okay, let me tell you something. Now that he's divorced, I don't know if it's finalized or not. I know yeah. we have a record on that one. Yeah. But from my understanding, he has. They filed a petition for divorce. I'm excited for this new Kanye. We're about to give post Kardashian, baby. Okay. Okay. I cannot wait for this album, EP, whatever, shoot, clothing, whatever he's gonna drop is about to be. Cause now it's we're gonna, gonna be fire. I mean, we all know, we all know. At the end of the day, Kanye comes with a fire. Artistically, do you still, do you still, do you still rock with him mentally though? Yeah, I mean, I think it's not our place to dictate the boundaries okay. of a creative mind. Okay. We like that mind because it exists in this boundaryless universe. Mm -hmm. So we don't, as a consumer, as a fan, whatever we are, we don't get to dictate what that person is doing. We have to take right. them as they are because we like their creativity. Like, yeah. That's part of it. Like, right. I think they, yeah. they kind of went together, you know, like it's, it's many of the great artists of various times have been characterized as crazy, mentally ill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's a part, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist, I can't say, you know, but I would say I, as a fan, as a consumer of what he does, I'm not here to dictate how that man's mind works. Right. I, I, at the end of the day, I like the way it works. Right, yeah. College dropout, I was like six, seven, 16, 17 when I came out, that mm -hmm. inspired a lot of my adulthood period mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i don't come for kanye like that like i think uh, okay. you, i don't get to pick and choose when it comes to artists like oh we like this we don't like this like do you like the artist or not at the Just end stand. of the day she is a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> and she gonna she gonna give it the real juice. That's fine though. That's fine. But I appreciate you for coming through. Thank you so much for into having this me. into this beautiful art gallery at nine hundred two. Oh, we got a week. So your excited. yes. Can you please give us out uh, your Instagram so we can know where to look for yes. you? Yes, Instagram is the t h e m b t the m b t. Make sure you follow and that's my girl. Should be Taylor. Hey. Law Office is Marisha Bay Taylor. Tap in. Hey, if you ever need any help, any assistance, my girl got you. It is your girl, Kayla Shay at K A A Y A S H A Y. And we are here at the Red Dot series. We're going to come to a close. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. We love you. Until the next time, peace. Peace. Yeah! Thank you so much.